Hi all, as, uh, my name is Seamus Doohan. I'm a walking guide here in uh, Donegal. My website is walkingdonegal.net. Uh, and I started guiding about 10 or 12 years ago uh, after I played, stopped playing football and I got an interest in hill walking. And people say, why would you be a guide? And I always answer, why wouldn't you be a guide? Because Donegal's got one of the longest coastlines in Ireland. It's got rugged peninsulas, rugged landscape, islands, coastal walks, two national parks. And uh, so I just started guiding, uh, as I suppose, just uh, for my own fitness. I joined the Northwest Mountaineering Club and then people started coming looking for guiding walks and it opened up a whole new business for me. Folks ask, normally ask how long is your walks and how long do they take? It's not about the length of the walk, it's actually what you do on the walk. So we might be out for a couple of hours, we'll start off nice general path, uh, maybe a, some hills, but normally we tailor walks to suit the needs of the clients. So if it's children, you might do wildflowers walks. Uh, people look for archeology, span but a geology, People even come to speak to a couple of folk Gaelic. Uh, so it's then it's then you do his me. So he them Gaelic can't latsa or shulaj heart of the wall. In my spare time, I've actually started a dabble a bit in, in art, and it's probably my art has been my inspiration from coming from walking. I do a lot of uh, seaside scenes and the mountains, obviously. Uh, so as you can see from my earlier picture, the one of the the, the location we're in here, the Poison Glen. It, this was my inspiration and it's just, I love going to art. When I started walking, I actually thought that I'd be taking people up to the top of all the hills like Muckish, Errigal and all the mountains in between, Sleeve Schnart. But uh, life is changing for me. It's uh, people come now, um, low level walking, as I said to you. Uh, we might get a minibus and do whistle stop tours at every location. We might go to, as I said, archeology, span places we've been the highest uh, high cross in Ireland, in Rye Cross. We might go to Tullabegley, people who want to see graveyards, old churches, castles, perhaps possibly Alton Farm, which is a hidden gem. Um, everything is possible uh, as long as we have enough time in the world. We'll show you Donegal. How about coming with me now and I'll show you in a tour. said this is a uh, Dunluhy Church, Eglish uh, and the Hearing Dunluhy. Uh, this uh, Dunluhy Church of Ireland what had been built as a memorial by Jane uh, Smith Russell. It was built for her husband James Russell. He was a landlord of the Dunluhy estate. He died in September 1848. It is said that James Russell was laid in a vault under the church floor. The church was probably consecrated around 1853 as a chapel of East to Tullabegley. Tully Begley was a parish consisting of the present day Guidor and Clonnelly parishes. As you can see here, the church is built of a white marble and blue quartzite, which was actually quarried locally. The, the roof had been removed in 1955 uh, as a safety measure. The bell was then distributed to the Cashel Church of Ireland near Doe Castle. There aren't many standing stones uh, in Donegal, especially in this area. And the area that we're in is actually in Rye, Rye Cross here, you'll see it in a few moments. Um, but I'm, we're saying that this stone was actually here before any church had been here. Uh, this was supposed to be the territory marker of uh, between Kennel Connell, which would be Ch Ch Donegal, and K uh, Kennel Owen, which would be Chiron. So we'll, now we'll go on to the church. I'll show you this, the church and the old Rye Cross. Uh, this is Rye Cross. It's uh, said to be the tallest high cross in Ireland. It's, uh, over 21 feet in height, more than seven meters. Uh, it's made from uh, one stone, one solid stone, which is very, very rare. Uh, as you can see, what we're saying is this was actually probably carried here from a local area and it was carved or finished here uh, totally. It, uh, it was actually found uh, outside the church in 1976 by a Belfast fisherman and he tripped over it when he was going fishing in the Rye River. It was then taken inside and erected inside the the church here by the Office of Public Works in about 1976-77. This was probably a, uh, uh, when it designed it, it was actually designed in a way that it had the quartzite inclusions, it was probably to replicate the, the tears of or the blood of Jesus as he was on the cross. So it's a symbolic feature. Uh, there was a very sad story with this church as well. Uh, there was a confirmation 
Uh, there was 200 people in the chapel at the time with the church and the Cromwell soldiers came in and uh, had killed them all, uh, including the bishop. And they're actually buried in a place about 200 yards from here called Lag in the Krawa. It's called the resting place of the bones. Uh, it's just outside the church here. They're very, very sad times. Uh, this is the Bridge of Tears, a uh, very, very sad uh, episode in the people of emigration in the Northwest also. Uh, the story goes that uh, after the American wake, uh, the families would have walked with their children here, uh, obviously bare feet, maybe some bread in their pocket and a little bottle of water in a sock probably, and they'd have walked this road here bare feet. And the story goes that when they came to this bridge, that the child was not allowed to come back or to look back. Had they looked back, they probably would have came back. Uh, the children might have been 10, 11, 12, 13 years of age. Very, very young children. Uh, probably only speaking Irish, not a word of English at all. Uh, only Irish. And heading away and walked to Letter Kenny and then proceeding another 20 miles to go to Derry. Uh, what happened when the first child had went, uh, they would have sent back uh, money to bring out the second child because people here in North Donegal would have large families like every other part of Ireland, uh, very, very poor as well. So every, every penny counted. So a lot of the money that was, they got was sent back um, to their families to bring out the second child and then just proceed for the, the third child. Uh, very, very sad times, as I said. Um, so you can imagine that you yourself at 13 years of age, walking here bare feet, going to walk 50 miles to Derry to get the boat. Uh, we're just on the Burton Port Railway Walk here, if you want to look at it. Uh, there's a new walk open by the Donegal County Council. It's about 9.4 kilometres uh, in length. Uh, it's going to be tarred uh, very soon. Uh, it'll be for cyclists and walkers. It's, it's actually a beautiful part of Ireland because um, there are no houses on this way. There's, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You have, you're walking along Law Aher. Uh, it's beautiful scenery here. You're looking back towards Muckish Mountain, Aglamore, Aglabug. You can see Errigal over here in the distance. And to the right here, you'll see all the islands from Torrey Island. And you can walk them back to a place here to Pulcara beside Fiddler's Bridge. Uh, you can cross the road here, and then you can proceed all the way to Cashnagor, which will be the, one of the highest uh, railway stations on the 50 kilometer line uh, at the moment. And it's been done all the way to Burton Port through Anagri. And bit by bit, each part of uh, each locality is doing its own uh, bit of repair work. And it's eventually, it'll be done all the way to Letterkenny. At the start of this walk also we have a cottage here in Krista um, belong to Noreen Vaughan of the famous song uh, Noreen Vaughan. Uh, she was called Bridget Gallagher and it was a girl that had emigrated in the 1900s and when she came back she had scarlet fever and this, uh, this tells the story in the song about her getting scarlet fever, coming back to her mother in Krista and her mother not recognising her. And the, the, at the end of the story the very, very sad verse was uh, it doesn't matter how much silver or gold you had, it, it, it meant if you didn't have your health, you had nothing, you had no wealth. So it's very, very sad. A lot of Americans would relate to it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of country and western singers sing it, and it's a great song from Ireland. Rory Daniels is one of the famous guys that sings it. Um, and he actually came down from Dublin especially to sing it for us with a group from Pulcara. He had never been in the house, he'd sung the song for 35 years, and he'd come down all the way especially, and I had the personal to walk him into the door and knock on the door and bring him into Noreen Bond's cottage. And there he sang without any music, uh, Noreen Bond. How you doing? This is my hidden gem on the Wild Atlantic Way and my hidden gem from Donegal, northwest Donegal, Alton Farm, uh, built by a, a solicitor from Dublin by the name of George Oban Woodhouse. It took us about 45 minutes to get here. As I said, it's off the beaten track. It's a, an old track that was built uh, when the castle was built, uh, an old horse track. It's a windy old road, very wet, but very worth it to come down here. Um, it belonged to uh, Alfords and Fulcara at one time, and there was about 2,000 acres with this farm. And because the Irish people weren't paying the rent, uh, they brought in the sheep, uh, the, the black-faced sheep, the Brocca sheep. And uh, it, what, what it actually meant uh, was that the sheep was worth more than human life because they were getting the meat and the wool of the sheep, whereas they were getting no rent from the Irish peasants. It's a beautiful place to come. It's the bottom of uh, Aglo Moor, and here we have Alton Lake around the front here. Um, it's one of the hidden gems, so come and see it.